Take it away. All right, thanks very much. Hi guys, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, this is my first time in Portland, and I'm going to be talking about Nancy today. Uh, clearly you all know, well, you've heard of it at least, because in the intro, Glenn said that it's one of the inspirations for this conference, and it's one of the really cool projects we want to kind of talk about and promote. And um, thanks for that, Glenn, no pressure, right? Uh, <laughs> So, who uses Nancy? Anyone? Oh, yeah, quite a few of you. Does anyone contribute? One person, okay. You are responsible for vetoing what I say. All right? If I start to lie, you need to shout. Um, so, what is Nancy? Nancy is a web framework. Uh, what is a web framework? Well, it's designed to serve most, if not all, of your, of your needs if you are to work on a project which serves something over HTTP. Is there anyone here who has never worked on a project which serves something over HTTP? Yeah. No, you've all done it right, so you know what that is. Um, in this talk, I'm not going to talk, it, it's not going to be so much of a technical talk, it's not going to be a technical deep dive. What I really want to concentrate on is the community. Nancy has a really, really awesome community. The project is, is, is really, really cool. So I want to talk about where it's come from, why it's come into being, where it is now, and where it's going. Um, there will be a little bit of code in the middle. Right? It's early afternoon. I can already see some tired eye eyelids. So I will keep you awake with a bit of code, hopefully. So where did Nancy come from? Uh, this guy, Andreas Huckinson. He's from Sweden, um, so I guess his name is actually Andreas Harkinson, something like that. Are there any Swedish here? No, that's good. Um, <laughs> uh, the Code Junkie, that's his online persona. You may recognize him better from that. That's his uh, Twitter handle, GitHub handle, etc., etc. And Back in about 2010, uh, Andreas saw a project called Sinatra, which is a Ruby web framework. Has anyone ever used Sinatra? Wow, I'm really surprised, pleasant surprise, that's cool. So a few polyglots here, right? You're not just hardcore.net guys, that's good. Uh, that's basically a Sinatra Hello World. Um, I'm not much of a Ruby guy. I know that it's probably not idiomatics, but do and end on the same line, so sorry, but I, I just couldn't resist it, I don't know. But that's your basic Sinatra Hello World. Um, that is a fully functioning website. Yeah, it's, it's very, very simple, but there's a lot going on there. Now, the platform will typically do the really low-level stuff for you, right? It will listen to the, to, a, to the network. It will pull out some text, which is the HTTP message. It will work out the method, the resource. It will look at the headers, give you the entity. And then it just goes, there you go. You do something with that. And that's where the web framework steps in. So there's, there's quite a lot going on here still. You've got to look at what method's been requested, look at what resource has been requested. You're going to, at some stage, branch your code to do something based on that. And then you've got to look at the, the accept header in the, in the headers. You've got to look, try and work out what the client thinks it can accept and what you can actually provide and kind of negotiate something here. That's actually more complicated than it sounds. And then you're kind of up to the do, more or less. Then you've got to work out what you, what you want to give back. That's the hello world. Then you've got to take that entity, you've got to serialize it into whatever content type you've decided the client's probably going to accept. You've got to stream that back to the client. You've got to send a status code. In this case, it'll be 200 OK. And then we're down to the end. Right? So there's quite a lot going on there. And that's what web frameworks give us. So Andreas saw this. And he thought, well, this is really cool. This is really elegant. But I mainly work in .NET. Um, I wish I had something like, that, like this in .NET. So there's an obvious answer, right? You write a .NET version. Okay, and that's, what, that's essentially what Andreas did. And of course, what's the first thing you have to do before you write any code? Yes, name. Well, that's what I do. I don't know. We spend, we spend weeks on naming at work. It's, it's the bottleneck of any project. Right. But it's also the most fun. Um, so he came up with the name Nancy. And I'm sure you've all worked that out by now, right? Frank Sinatra, Nancy Sinatra. 
Child of Frank. It's, it's a pretty good name. Uh, what do you do next? Yes! Oh, you guys are good. Um, so yeah, you throw around some ideas, you know, you come up with some... Uh, I was supposed to do a demo, but I'll do it after. Um, you come up with some ideas, you try to brainstorm a little bit, you try and find something which is really going to capture the essence of the project. It's be oh. That's my favourite one. Uh, you play around a bit. I drew these, by the way. And then you settle on something which is nice and simple, and, and they settled on this, and I think that's really nice. I love it. Okay. Um, then you come up with a syntax. Okay, and this is what Andreas came up with. It's it's also fairly nice. In fact, it's, I think it's very nice. It's very it's very very similar to the Nancy Sinatra, uh, the, the the Sinatra example. So what's going on here? Again, a method. A resource. The underscore is a context variable which gives you things like the query string or the entity that's been supplied in the body of a post. And then you define your resource, hello world, and you just let the framework do the rest. Okay. That of course is a fully working .NET program. Right? No, not really. Okay, it's it's dot net, right? There's a <laughs> there's a little bit of noise, right? Um, but working on dot net was a fairly fundamental constraint of this dot net web framework. <laughs> so let's see this in action. Um, now here, I'd like to just uh, fire up a console or something and just run this. Um, in fact. I've, I've, I've already screwed up. I've missed out the Sinatra demo. So do you want to see that quickly? Yeah? Okay, I'll just do it quickly. Um, let's go back. Let's go, oh, let's get past that stuff again. Um, so I'm going to grab this. I'm going to create a directory. Let's say Sinatra. Sinatra. I'm going to create a new file. We'll just call it hello. Cool. RB, type file, fire up my text editor. No, I did not want that now, thank you. And in my hello RB, just paste that in. I'm at a .NET conference showing Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to get thrown off stage for this? Uh, and then we can run it. Ruby. Hello.rb. Sinatra has taken the stage on port 4567. Let's just test that out. Uh, 4567. And there we go, it works. So really nice. Now, let's do the same thing for Nancy. Ah, that's where this little thing comes in. All right? Nancy has a little bit of a, uh, sorry, Sinatra has a little bit of an advantage over .NET when it comes to showing a hello world, right? It's a native scripting environment. That's not something that .NET has really had until now, right? This is a shameless plug because I work on scripts, yes, but uh, I think it's a nice example of what happens when two projects come together and um, I think you'll see that scripts, yes, is a really nice way to, to, to show little things like this and to play around. So. Let's stop Nancy, uh, Sinatra, sorry. I'm going to keep getting those two mixed up. Let's create a directory called Nancy. Let's also create a new file called hello.csx. Text editor, hello CSX. Did I copy that or not? Probably not. And I'm just going to copy the module. I'm going to leave out the using. I'll explain that. Um, what we normally have to do here is kind of um, do a bit of plumbing work. We'd have to reference the DLLs, do the usings, fire up a host. This is also an advantage that things like Ruby has over .NET for scripting. Um, most 
packages like Nancy are not really designed for a scripting environment because there never really has been one. So this is where script packs come in. Script packs are a little thing that we brought into ScriptCS just to provide a little bit of glue, just to make things a little bit nicer, give a little bit of syntactic sugar for scripting. So I'm going to use that here. And there is a Nancy script pack called, well, the object is called that. And then we just call host. So what I'm going to do back here is just install the Nancy script pack. And then let's run it. OK, we're at port double eight double eight. And let's just prove that really did work. There we go, hello world. Cool. OK, where were we? So you can see that the syntax is fairly similar, right? Now, Nancy is not a port of Sinatra. Okay, at, after this point, they pretty much diverge. It was an inspiration, and I can see, I, I'm sure you can see that it really was an inspiration. It's very, very similar. And I know these things are trivial, right? But remember, these are frameworks we're talking about, and not so much libraries. There's been a bit of chatter recently about frameworks versus libraries. I think there is a distinction. It's not binary. You're not either a framework or a library. It's kind of more of a spectrum, I think. But at one end, you've got things like JSON.NET, which is, I think is a library. You know, typically you Ask, ask a question and get an answer. At the other end, you've got things like Nancy, which I think, well, for me, is very much a framework. Frameworks tend to shape your code. Okay, so you adhere to, the, what, to, the, to what the framework dictates. With Nancy, you start it up with a host. The Nancy runtime kicks in. Its IOC container kicks in. It finds your dependencies. It gathers them all together, and it calls into your code. All right, that, for me, is very much the, the hallmark of a framework. And for a framework to have a hello world which looks like that, I think is really cool. Yes, you've got the fluff on both sides of the require and the class in Nancy, but I think a hello world tells you a lot about a framework. If the hello world's nice and elegant, the rest of the framework tends to be nice and elegant. It's a reasonably good heuristic in my experience. Later on, this guy came along. Okay, so the project started to grow. Steve Robbins, he's from a place called Cheshire, Cheshire near Liverpool. Uh, you may know him better as Grumpy Dev. Uh, he is not grumpy at all. He is a really nice guy. And Steve got so involved in the project that he came up with this idea of the super duper happy path. And his idea was to, was, was to actually, what he wanted to do was to sell the bootstrapper idea to Andreas. And at this point, Andrea, he contributed so much to the project, Andreas had already invited him in. He was part of the project. The one had become two. But they decided on this super duper happy path, happy path philosophy. And this really is a phrase just to sum up some certain key values which they thought were really important for the project. The first one is it just works. Okay? You write a module, it gets picked up, and it just works. You declare a dependency, define an implementation, it'll just pick it up, inject it, and it just works. Easily customizable. Right? We, we saw in the Hello Worlds all the defaults working, and they're really cool. But before long, for your app, you're going to want to change how this thing works. Okay? It's just the reality. And being easy customizable was a, was a really important thing for the guys from the start. Low ceremony. Right? The framework stays out of your way until you need it. You, know, you don't have to write a load of stuff up front. You don't have to like, decorate loads of stuff with attributes and that kind of stuff. You just kind of write your code, you inherit from the module, that's pretty much the only thing you have to do. Low friction, um, everything's really well designed, the naming is superb, um, the API really does guide you. you know, you're not often left scratching your head wondering how to do something. Um, but there, is, there are great docs as well. And let's see a non-trivial example, because Hello World's all very good, right? But, uh, Let's go back to our old friend Visual Studio for this. And let's see some of this stuff in action. So what I've done here is I'm using a self-host. Okay, I'm not really much of an IIS man. I do a lot of stuff with Nancy at work, but we tend to have Windows services self-hosted. 
So I'm going with that model here. This is just a console app. We define a URI, we create a host and start it, give it a little bit of feedback, and then I just do a typical ugly demo thing and just block the thread to stop the thing exiting. Then I define a speak to module. And what this thing is, is designed to do is when a user browses to speak to and then supplies a name, it'll just chat back a message uh, designed for that user. Okay, it's just very, very simple stuff. Notice here how it takes a dependency on this I speaker. Right? It uses this, calls a speak to method on it, and it passes the listener object, which is of type person. This I'll explain in a second. But this is a typed object that comes back called person. And it just gives the message back. Here we've got our I speaker interface, really, really simple. We've got a person, just first name and last name, and just a little to string override. If it's just a first name, it's just that. If it's first and last name, it just puts a space in between. And then we've got the message that comes back. And this is very simple as well. It's just a bit of text and timestamp. I could have just returned a string, but I wanted to return an object which gets serialized. I just wanted that bit of code to be invoked. Then we've got an implementation of a Nancy speaker. So whatever person you give to this, it just says, hello, person. Nancy is great. And then I'll come back to this thing that I refer to up here, this thing here. Now, Nancy has this concept of root segment constraints. So what this means is, I can whatever, whatever is put in that part of the URL will be exposed on this context object. And I've used an underscore here. I know some people absolutely hate this, but I don't really mind it. You can call it whatever you like. You're writing the expression. And whatever text is put in there will come back on this listener object. Now, if I don't write something like this, if I just have that, it will just be a string. What I can also do is I can write something like int, right? and it will just parse it into an int. If it can't be parsed into an int, it will just say 404 not found. But you can extend that, right? easily customizable. And I've decided I don't want an int, I don't want a primitive, I want a person, which I define. And that's where this root segment constraint kicks in. I'm inheriting from this convenient base class. I'm saying that person is a thing that I'm ultimately interested in. The name down here is just person. This is, a, this is a string that I can put in that root segment constraint. And then I try match. And here I'm just doing something really, really simple. I'm just splitting on a dash. And then the first segment is, or the first part of that is just the first name, and the second part of that is the last name, if there is a dash. If there's no dash, there's just a first name. So let's see this in action. Uh, that is because the other host is still running. Stop. Go on. All right. So let's try this. Who shall I speak to? Oh, you can see I've been practicing, right? I don't need to speak to Glenn. He already knows Nancy's great. Who shall I tell Nancy's great to? <coughs> Seb? Serial Seb? Yeah. There we go. So it works. Now, again, notice there's no wire. I haven't had to write any wire up here, right? I haven't had to say to Nancy what to do. All I've done is just define classes. But this module just takes a dependency on iSpeaker. The iSpeaker is sitting there. The, uh, the implementation is just sitting there. I haven't told it to use Nancy Speaker. All this stuff is just found at runtime and injected. The person constraint, it sees this, it inspects it, it, looks, it finds out that its, person is na its name is person, and it just uses it. Right? Really, really low ceremony. It's so easy to do this stuff. And we can go further. Let's say we want to change. Ah, this is another feature of Nancy. It has this little thing called extensions. And if I just stick .json on the end of that, it just becomes JSON. Right? Uh, oh, by the way, I should really show you why, where that view is coming from. Right? Uh, I forgot that completely. The object that comes back from the module is a message. And all I've done is I've just defined a message.html. And this is a super simple view engine which is built in. And all I've done is I've picked off the timestamp of this model, which is that message. 
colon and then the text. And that's what renders that. But as I said, if I put JSON on the end, I get JSON. Right, this is nice built-in stuff. Now, what happens if I want to customize that serialization? Really, really easy. So back in the code, all I do is I just define my own serializer. Right? I just define I serializer, and I take as a dependency the default serializer. Again, I don't have to do that wire up. It's just done automatically. It knows what one of those is, so it just injects it. The extensions are the .json or .whatever. I can do the same ones as the default one, so I just pass that call on. I can handle the same content type, so I just pass that on. And then all I'm doing is, this is called an array all the things JSON serializer. And all I'm doing is saying, whatever the default one does, I'm just going to wrap it in an array, and it's going to be the first item. So I just write an opening square bracket, let the default one do its work, and write a closing square bracket. Right, really simple. So if I start that again, there we go. It's in an array. Um, I've got some more sh stuff to show you, but I'm going to skip it because I'm already 20 minutes in, and there's some quite a lot of stuff to cover. So contributors. Contributors are really important to Nancy from right from the beginning. Um, the contributing.md, which is on their GitHub account, shows you how to use Git. Right? It, it presumes no knowledge whatsoever. It presumes you've never contributed to anything before. It says, this is how you use Git. This is how you create a branch. This is how you create a pull request. This is a, a little snippet of, the, of this web page. And if you've ever contributed, you appear on this web page. Right? They, they don't forget the golden rule of open source. Thank, thank, and thank again. I've deliberately chosen the bottom of the page just to show you that that guy at the bottom is number 205, Yanis Scoot. 205 contributors so far. Uh, you've heard of Microsoft, Microsoft MVP. This is Nancy MVM, uh, their equivalent, most valued minion for their most valued minions. Uh, there are now eight people in the core team. It's, just, it's grown well beyond something that two people can manage on their own. Uh, the Jabber channel. Um, who's ever been on Jabber? Yeah, a few of you. Nancy affects Java channel absolutely superb. I want this is of course this is open to everyone. You can go on it today. I once had a problem at work. I had a bug. Uh, I found a bug in serialization. It was some kind of minor bug. So I went on this channel. The own, at least one of the owners is usually there. You see, there's three of them there on that particular day. We chatted about it. We came up with a fix. Someone else PR'd it, someone else merged it. It went into master, got built, went to my get. I installed the pre-release of my project. And that whole thing took about 20 minutes. Right? Really amazing experience. And I'm not the only one. Other people have said they've had exactly the same experience. Blogs started popping out. Um, this guy, Philip Hayden, wrote a lot of good stuff about content negotiation and a lot of other stuff. Jonathan Channon wrote about porting <laughs> Uh, the MVC Nerd Dinner sample app into, into Nancy and a load of other stuff. This guy wrote a book, right, Nancy Web Development. You can get that today on, on uh, Amazon and whatever. It, here I've just searched NuGet Gallery. Right, 127 packages. At that, I think it's actually gone up since then. But when I look, 27 of these are from the core team, which means 100 packages came from the community. Right, that's pretty impressive. Mono, who uses Mono? Yeah, at least some of you. Cool. Um, it's used Mono from the start, or it's rather it's been it's been Mono compliant from the start. There's a build on Travis CI, runs all the tests to prove it. Owen, you, you you've you've probably heard about Owen. Um, Seb did a good talk on it earlier. Nancy was the first Owen compliant framework. And earlier this year, Nancy went 1.0. And what did this mean? Well, the team wanted to send out a message. They wanted to send out a message that we've proven the philosophy. It's baked. We're not going to make any more breaking changes unless we go to 2.0. Uh, we're going to think about that much more carefully now, because there were a lot of breaking changes while it is 0.x. And that put a lot of people off. Um, some people didn't want to use it before it was 1.0, because there's this kind of like stigma attached to initial dev. but. I don't think it meant much. I used it for loads of stuff in production before it went 1.0. But significant milestone for Nancy. 
And where is it used? Just giving. Anyone seen Just Giving? No, it's fairly, maybe you don't really have it over here. It's pretty popular in the UK. Um, it's kind of like a Kickstarter for charities. That uses Nancy. Uh, X Factor, Do you, you have that here, right? The X Factor. Um, it started in the UK. In the UK, I don't know about the US, but in the UK, when you vote via text message, your vote goes via Nancy module. Jabber, we've seen that earlier, that runs on Nancy. Octopus, anyone use Octopus? Runs on Nancy. Uh, anyone use N Service Bus? Yeah, this is Service Insight, which li lets you look under the hood. The back end runs, runs in Nancy. And last year in June, there was a major adoption story uh, which rocked the community. It was publicized, but maybe didn't get as much attention as it should. And that was this. I'll skip that. Oh, this, that was this wonderful website in a tweet by David Roberts. Um, and just take a moment to see what he's doing here, right? He's, he's installing his dependencies, right? Scripts yes, Nancy. He's writing a website. He's starting it and hosting it. And he still has room to drop his mic and shout out to Nancy and shout out to Scripps yes, all in one tweet. Right? This is... This is next level stuff, right? Yeah? Good on you, David Roberts. Um, have I got time to run this? Yeah, not really. Uh, but it does work. And by the way, this is PowerShell, right? That's, that sign there is a common. Right? So you can drop your mic when you run this. Very, very cool. Um, this is the Microsoft of today, right? Microsoft are open source. At Build last year, they pretty much open sourced a lot. Who thinks that frameworks like Nancy, and not just Nancy, you know, there's a lot out there in web framework space alone, Service Stack, Open Raster, Foov MVC, Simple Web. Who thinks that those frameworks had at least some influence on Microsoft's decision for that? You know? Yeah, I, I certainly do. And this is an awesome thing. There are 51 awesome people here, clever guys. They're all doing their work in the open now, right? That's, that, that benefits all of us. So what's next for Nancy? Uh, there are 180 issues outstanding. Um, there's a lot of good stuff planned. They're going to rewrite the whole security pipeline to use claims principle. If, you're if you know about that, get involved. Really good time to get involved. They're going to rewrite the OWIN handling so it works really well in a, in a composite pipeline. So you can, take, you can have, say, one team writing an, a blog, one team writing a shopping cart, one team writing an admin site. You pick them up on one OWIN host, you just plug them in three midfunks. Right? It's pretty cool. Um, so, I mean, what that means is really, that, you know, there's eight guys, right? There's 180 outstanding issues. It's not going to happen on its own. Yeah? So the future of Nancy is you guys, right? It's us, it's the community. So, you know, good time to get involved. We definitely haven't got time for a QA. and a I do want to tell you a quick story about this guy. Um, in 2010, this guy had never contributed to open source. He'd never even used Git. He put out a call on Twitter to say that he wanted to get involved in Nancy. The owners replied. They said, OK, cool. How can we help? They showed him how to use Git, showed him how to contribute. He then wrote a port of Nerd Dinner, who was spending most evenings face to face on Skype with Andreas. And now he's part of the core team. He started blogging because of Nancy. You know, this is like naught to 100, and it's all because of Nancy. And he's not the only guy, right? A lot of other people have had this, had this experience. So really, really cool. My time is up. So um, Nancy, it's a great project. Um, if you're already using it, keep using it. If you're contributing, keep doing what you're doing. That's awesome. If you've never used it, try the Hello World. I hope I've showed you how easy it is to do that, right? It's plain and simple. Really, really easy. So try it. Most of you have got laptops here. Why not do it now in, or in the break? You know, just try it, play around, tinker. From tinkering comes invention, right? And I guess the message I want to give to you guys who have never tried it, there's a big, warm community waiting for you with open arms. So please come and join us. So guys, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.